You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to wander around. Hey, we all know that we're going to die, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your fantastic host jc and with me today is the pretty okay kiki how you doing today kiki i might be getting sick might be getting sick well let's hope yeah you deserve it oh if i get sick it's because of some of you assholes who've been sick for so long and now you've given it to me uh yes that's how most diseases work rat bastards i have a, i have a sore throat starting what you should do is gurgle some, like, uh, salt water. That's why I'd recommend. So by gurgling, you don't mean actually going into the ocean and then... No, like, like get some salt water water and, like, just gurgle it a little bit. Health tips from JC. Gurgle salt, salt water. Yep. <laughs> okay. Or mouthwash. I did. I did do that. I did. That helps with sore throat. Of course, I could also be getting the keto flu because I'm going back on keto. And oh, and I that's stupid. Totally reduced my sugar and carb intake and now i feel like shit <laughs> but it won't last it'll be fine mm-hmm. it'll be fine mm-hmm. kiki needs to get back down to her training weight <laughs> you do you kiki my health tips end at fitness and l- living well so anything past that i don't know anything about but i will say this i do not recommend keto diet for everybody it does it doesn't work for everybody it does work for me and i don't live on it I just use it as a tool to get down to a certain weight, and then we go back to maintenance mode. But the problem was that, um, so I was on maintenance mode, and then vacation happened, and I ate Uh, everything. (laughs) Speaking of vacation, where are my two cheesecakes? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I didn't actually- I don't want excuses, I want results, Kiki. Where are my two cheesecakes? (laughs) I didn't actually make it to Alex's Cheesecakes because it's in downtown Greensboro and I didn't have any reason to go down there this year, okay? Disappointed. And then the multitude of cake that I brought back from Delicious got eaten by other people. Sorry. I haven't been this upset in at least three days, so thank you for this. Thank you. There is, however, because like I said, we spoil little man... I have some ice cream cake left over. Ice cream cake is for peasants. You can have ice cream with cake. You can have cake. You can have ice cream. I love me some good ice cream. But ice cream cake, unless it's summertime, it ain't for me. All right, man. Whatever. Hey, you're going to love this. I had a synchronicity happen while I was searching for information on local monasteries because of this show. You know, I think I just had a synchronicity happen where I realized no cheesecake. You're talking about synchronicities. I better get out of here. Uh, okay, so I found this place in Philadelphia called The Monastery. And it's located on the Wissahickon Creek. And although it has no connection to monastic life, Johannes Kelpius lived not far from the damn place. <laughs> and as our listeners might know, we just talked about the Cave of Kelpius in the last episode and how totally lame it was. I do have an update on that episode. I did try to join the Kelpia Society. I made good on that promise. Uh Uh-huh. And I got an email back saying that the society was dormant. Sad face. Can't join. Don't exist anymore. So I did email them back to ask if they were still giving the tours that we talked about. And if they were trying to do any of the other stuff, like the agricultural part, like restoration and and, and all that. And I didn't get anything back. So, hey, if there's anyone who wants to reinvigorate the Kelpie Society, I would get in touch with the Philadelphia Historical Society, maybe. Maybe. I don't have time to do that, or else I seriously would consider it. Instead of trying to preserve the past, we should instead try to build the future. Thank you. Words of wisdom by JC. Do you also want to build a wall for that future? Walls will have to be built for building purposes. But, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I feel like you were trying to put me in a Trump camp. 
and I am not a supporter of the Trump camp, so I do not appreciate that. That? <laughs> like, who's that? <laughs> um, yeah, no. I was, uh, I was merely stating that if we don't study history, we are doomed to repeat it. Like, right now. Study history does not mean preserving history. Historical landmarks and the such. You can what? study things. Get, get out. Get out of my studio right now. Get out. Nah, I'm good. I'm comfy. <laughs> Come on, that'd be really cool to restore the orchard. And I'm going to tell you about in, in the very next episode that we're going to be talking about a historical site where restoration has been done. And it's they're doing some really cool new things, even though it's a restored area. So, Well, that's good. Fuck you. <laughs> they're looking into the future. All right. So, I, no, I will agree with that. I like the idea of public restorations, especially the one that we'll be talking about in the next episode. They do some really cool things for youth groups to get them involved in um, in horticulture. So, In yeah. what? In horticulture, not horticulture. Oh, I was going to say, who, who, buddy? Youth groups getting involved in horticulture. Oh. America's going right. That's what I say. We're just going to develop a new red light district down on, I don't know, North Broad somewhere. No, nah, let's just put it right next to the middle school. You're the one that said this was youth groups. All right. So on that note, we're going to take a short break for our sponsor. And when we come back, we're going to delve into the Goblin of Easton. So before we get into the story of the Goblin of Easton, you have to say it that way. You don't have to. Legally, nowhere does it say you have to <laughs> say it like that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what a goblin is. So, And I did research for this. JC, I'm so excited. You, you're you like all about explaining to us about what goblins are. You've been talking about this for like days. I have. I've been so excited because you actually trusted me to do research. So I did research. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly what a goblin is. JC's taking the helm. Go for it. I got to let it load. One moment, please. It's so loading. We're in a basement. You know. I should have had it pulled up, but I didn't. I'm debating on whether we leave this in or um, booper reel this because it's hysterical that you actually did research and now you can't get it to load because it just takes you so much of it that you can't get it to load. That's great. Okay, go for it. All right, guys. So goblins are small, black-hearted humanoids that layer in despoiled dungeons and other dismal settings. Individually, they may be weak. But they gather in large numbers to torment other creatures. And their hit die, usually they have a strength of eight. <laughs> Let's go over some of this stuff. Okay, so they have a strength of eight, minus one. Dex is 14, usually has a bonus of two. Con is a good 10, okay? We're sticking with the 10. Intellect? Goblins are more intelligent than you may think, and they can max out at 10 intellect. Wisdom? Not very wise. They can max out at eight. Charisma, also an eight because they stink. So that's goblins. Uh, they can move 30 feet in a round and they have about seven hit points or 2d6 hit die. They usually wear leathery armor or, you know, just scraps that they can scavenge from the battlefields. Goblins, once again, they're little, they're little guys. This is what we're talking about, right? So if I'm going to be playing a race of goblin. Yeah. Would you suggest dual wielding knife or should I go bow and arrow? Well, you probably, because they do have low constitution. So you're probably going to want to go more with a bow and arrow. Stay out of that main field of combat. Also, they're a smaller creature, so you can't necessarily dual wield swords. You'd have to have a sword and a dagger at the most. Oh, did I say, I meant, yeah, I meant knives. Like, did I say swords? I think you said sword. Let's do a playback. That's okay. If I did say swords, I actually meant daggers. But hey, you know what? This is all really informative if we're going to be playing d d is, is that not what we're doing? That is... You said we we're going to be talking about goblins. I assumed it was d d because they're the only goblins that I... that exist. <laughs> That's for the other podcast. The other, other podcast. What's that, like four of them now that we want to do? Yeah. Okay. Did you know goblins and hobgoblins are related? But hobgoblins tend to be more militaristic and... Really? But hob- like law- lawful evil. Hobgoblins are more evil. In D&D. Yeah. Huh. Interesting, because... They, they tend to be lawful evil. It's tough. If you're not a hobgoblin, you don't want to be around a 
group of hobgoblins. If you're a, not a goblin, you can be around a group of goblins. Also, bugbears are another type of goblinoid. They're the strongest. What about kobolds? Uh, no, those are more of a reptilian creature, not related to goblins at all. Which is interesting because what I'm going to tell you when I talk about the actual history of goblins. <laughs> Goblin probably comes from the word kobold from German. Oh, interesting. Well, kobolds in D&D are small, leathery reptilian creatures who usually worship dragons. That makes perfect sense. And they can be good creatures. Most cities, actually, their sewer networks are built by kobolds. And the kobolds usually have a underground civilization in those sewer networks. That's actually quite informative. I did not know that. I mean, I've been playing D&D since like 1980 ish. Uh huh. Yeah, see? So I learned something new today, at least about Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, you sure did. But that was the research you want me to do. You no. said research goblins, and I came with research on goblins. And since I know you so well, I went ahead and actually did the research on goblins. <laughs> I thought it was weird you were asking me to research D&D stuff, but even when I messaged you, I'm like, so research D&D goblins, and you were like, no, research paranormal sightings of goblins as a cryptid creature, and I was like, so D&D goblins, right? And then you said no, and sent me a, like a gif of somebody just taking their their palm and hitting it in the, to their yeah. forehead. Yes, that is correct, yeah. And I said, so D&D goblins, <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. You said, sure, yeah, do it. And now this is where we're at. Yeah, so basically I just gave up and then did the research myself. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we could have this moment. I know. This is great. This is wonderful. Cut it. No. No, you made this goblin bed. You're going to lie in this goblin bed. I would never lie in a goblin bed because (laughs) they would be disgustingly stinky. And I, I have standards, okay? I'm not going to sit or lie in some garbage piled in the corner of a cave nay 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 all right so sometime in the 14th century goblins enter the european and scandinavian lexicon so the word goblin is said to have three possible origins the first one is that it came from ghibellines who a century before has supported the holy roman emperor against the papacy and they were fighting the guelphs and that is a whole other story a really, really complicated and long story that no one needs to know, possibly ever, unless 12th to 15th century Italian history is your jam. Either way, the Ghibellines and the Guelphs had nothing to do with the origin of either the word goblin or elf, so you just cross that one off your list. thought I'd mention it because, believe it or not, there's still crap out there that suggests it, but it's in a lot older books. You might come across it, so just put, put that out of your mind. The more likely connection is suggested by the Oxford English Dictionary, which, and I quote, Middle English, probably Anglo-French, goblin, or the medieval Latin, goblinus, from the name gobel, related to cobalt. Goblinus, by the way, was the name of a devil or demon haunting Normandy. Now, I like this idea, though, of goblins, which comes from the fairy figure of Gob, the king of the element of earth, and the king of the gnomes, In Old English, the earth spirits who followed him might have been referred to as goblings, and this gives us an older origin than the other two. Makes a lot more sense, and I think it's kind of cool. I like that one. That's the one I like the most. Magically speaking, you can summon gob, and uh, I have a sigil for it, actually. You want to summon gob later? No, no. No, I do not, nor do I think you can, because I do not still believe in magic. Ah, but you like Gob, though. Gob's a good guy. When he comes to you, he's very centering, and because he's an earth elemental, he's very grounding. (laughs) Haha, pun intended. So I should have my plus five long sword at the ready for the goblin god king creature. No, you don't want to hurt him. Oh, it should be a a vapor blade. Wait, what's that? Vorpal. Vorpal. Wow. Yeah, the elder has to has to correct you on your blade. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, the one that's been playing D and D since like 1980s had to print, had to tell me. Even though I'm the one that had to tell you about fucking kobolds. Okay, come on. No. We all have our areas of speciality. Mine happens to be the knowledge of subterranean races such as kobolds and goblins. Because I recently researched them for this episode. So, 
I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna touch that. I'm gonna continue. Goblins were first popularized in tales from the Middle Ages, often tormenting children. Goblin Market, written in 1862 by Christina Rossetti, was talking about goblins trying to feed poisonous fairy fruit to children, while Charles Dickens used them in mischievous fashion in the 1836 Pickwick Papers story, The Goblins Who Stole a Sexton. And I don't know what happened with that, because I didn't read it. Do you know what a sextant is? Yes. What is a sextant? I know what it is. I'm just kind of excited. It's a tent in which people have sex in it. No. No, that's not what it is, Kiki. It's a navigational device. I did know that. Oh, okay. Yes, used on ships. I was being totally stupid, trying to get a joke in there. <laughs> yeah, well, your jokes are bad, so. Whatever. Leave them to me. So basically, goblins have run the gamut between being downright malicious to just being mischievous little gnomes. I don't know which one I like more. They're both good. Both mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, good's not the right word. Although you do supposedly worship or honor Loki, so, you know. And he's an asshole. He's great. He's not an asshole. Don't, I'm not getting, I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into <laughs> I that. I put the bait out there. I put nope, the bait out there, nope. guys. <laughs> no, nope, not doing it. Not doing it. We're staying on point. So you want to hear the story of the Goblin of Easton, or do you already know it? But I'm going to tell it anyway, because our listeners don't know it. But do you know I, it? Well, I know I've heard parts of it. As I am the one that originally told you, hey, there's a Goblin of Easton story. And I researched it probably like 10 plus years ago. So you're going to have to re-enlighten me. All right. So I'm going to tell you guys a much shorter to the point version because it could get kind of verbose. At some point, and, and this is, by the way, this is the one I'm going to tell you is pretty much, I don't say it's, it's not word for word because I shortened it a little bit, but it's. The concept is there, and that's important for you guys to know because I didn't change the concept. At some time during the early days of Easton, PA, there lived a monk. He often took confession from local residents. However, this monk had evil intentions. He used people's confessions against them. He blackmailed many of his visitors with their confessions, threatening to reveal them unless he was paid. He was eventually caught after beating an elderly woman to death and was hanged for his crime. His body almost immediately sprung back to life, contorting into a goblin-like figure. He killed and ate the other monks at his former mission before retreating into the woods, never to be seen again. Or was he? Dun, dun, dun. Well, that's a great little bit of folklore for Eastern Pennsylvania. Did you know that the town of Easton is as eastern as you can get in pa is that what you think i mean is that why you think it's named that i think it might have been a factor in its naming (laughs) no (laughs) i think it might have been a factor it is not i know where the town of easton name comes from no no so it came from somewhere else no no i mean it's named is it's it's yeah but the guy who was like hey (laughs) we should name easton easton hear me out because it says East as you could get in PA. Get it? Get it, guys? But it's also Easton, you know, like. So believe it or not, maybe it's because I have special abilities, or maybe it's just because I know you. (laughs) I know where why the town is named at. The town was named for the English estate Easton of William Penn's father-in-law, Thomas Furmore, first Earl of Pomfret. I don't how does that Stop it from being called Easton because it's the most eastern place All right. in Pennsylvania. All right, spooksters, go to your phones. You're on your phones. You're probably listening to this on your phones. Let's find out right now. What is the most? <laughs> I want to. I want to know now. Eastern town in PA. It is Matamoras, Matamoras, Pennsylvania. Well, Easton never was heard the of most it. Eastern town at the time it was named. Oh named boy! Easton. Sorry. Wow. I, I didn't think I had to get into, uh, you know, specific spec- specifics. Spe- specificity. Yeah. Specificity. Hold on. Let's find out when it was in. Well, it was incorporated in 1905, but that doesn't mean I'm going to prove you wrong. God damn it. <laughs> You're going to try. Oh, look at that. 1880 uh-huh. was when Madame Morris was there. Madame Morris, which um, means that um, 
It's almost the same time as Easton, unfortunately. Like, literally, they're kind of, like, in the same... They were developed at the same time. So what you're saying... So you're still wrong. <laughs> so what you're saying is that I'm right, and Easton is the most eastern town uh, in PA. Let's bring it back a, a little bit. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So We're talking about goblins, Yeah, Easton. we're talking about goblins. So, well, technically, we're talking about Easton, but... Well, a goblin that happens to supposedly live in Easton. Right, right, right. So, I do want to say this. I had, like I said, I shortened the story a little bit for you guys, but at the end here, there's kind of an important part that I found in another version of the story that says that when he became a goblin, that the people who were at like his, his hanging... They screamed and fled, and no prayer of his former brothers in faith could banish the goblin. It disappeared deep into the forest, only to return at night and prey upon the monks of the mission who had been responsible for its death, which doesn't... Its death? His death? After five of the brothers had fallen to the goblin, the rest of the monks abandoned the mission and moved to another part of the country. Since that time, the mission house had slowly fallen into ruin. So... Are you ready? Are you ready for me to totally debunk the story? And I'm a life ruiner. Well, let me explain some quote unquote facts that the story is presenting. Okay. First off, this goblin is technically it wouldn't be a goblin. This would be a ghoulish type creature because it's an undead at this point. A goblin itself is a creature like a, a living, breathing creature. This guy died and his body was reformed into a goblin s creature. So... I believe it's a ghoul or some other form of undead. And that is actually a very good point. Thank you. But Sometimes I I make them. (laughs) It's it's a rare occasion, but mark it down, guys. This episode, which is number 14. Yeah, that's a good point about how technically this isn't a goblin. However, I'm also going to explain to you guys two Christian sects that don't get along. And one of them probably made up the story about the other. To piss people off. So the story or legend or whatever you want to call it is a perfect example of how if you just do a little bit of research or you have subject knowledge, you can debunk something instantly. I'm going to say this. This will be a time that I get to use my Catholic knowledge for the betterment of the paranormal community. And I may never say those words again. Probably not. There are several glaring problems with this story. The first part is that it says it's really unclear origins. Like JC is like literally taking a nap right now. <laughs> and this is not that bad okay so it makes it suspect almost immediately because they're like the early days of easton i mean when exactly was that you don't know right so that means it has to be sometime after the original founding of easton which is 1887 now i can only find one fully functioning monastery in pennsylvania in the 1800s at all and that was the trappist monks of Carrolltown in adams county which is three hours away from easton Other monks would move into Pennsylvania much later from other states. They were established outside, like the Franciscans were established in Ohio. A monk is not a missionary, and so they wouldn't reside in a mission house. They'd be in a monastery, which is why I was looking for monasteries. So the lack of a monastery in Easton in the 1800s is a big problem. If that monastery existed, they wouldn't be hearing confessions from outsiders. A monk can be an ordained priest and hear a confession or lead mass, but those monks are ordained for monastic communities only. For example, the abbot or leader of the monastery is usually ordained so he can hear confession or say mass, and he will have a couple of other ordained monks to help out. Even monks need to hear confession and go to mass because they can't leave the monastery. They need their own people to hear confession and say mass, which is just another reason that this monk is a total fake, because he wouldn't have left the monastery to hear confession at all, which means he wouldn't have beaten up an old woman and he wouldn't have been hanged. Maybe just in his spare time, he liked beating up women, old women. You know, everyone needs a hobby. That's what I say. Technically, his hobby was hearing up old women, hearing, hearing confessions from rich people. No, that was his job. No, that, that, that was, was a paying job. It wasn't. He doesn't get. That's the other thing. He's a monk. He doesn't get paid. Well, no, he got paid by blackmail. Which is the whole point of like being a monk is that you don't need anything. Well, you don't need, but you know, you want a Sherpa lined monk's robe. The, the church doesn't like just give those away. You need to buy a Sherpa lined monk's robe. <sighs> I'm going to come over here. And, and beat you with this. I'm just I'm just giving you why he uh, did what he did. 
But he would have had to leave the monastery to do that. And no, nah, you could probably like uh, Uber yeah, one over. Okay, so let's talk about these five brothers who, you know, were supposedly killed. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A brother is a man who is not an ordained priest, but one that works in the community and offers a specific charism, which is a gift, willingly and graciously given. That's the Catholic version of what it is. An example of a brotherhood is um, the brothers of Christian schools who devote their lives to teaching. Again, brothers doesn't seem to be the correct word to be used in this scenario because brothers can serve as lay people inside a monastery. But since there's no monastery, uh, historically speaking, we're back to square one. No monastery, no monk. That seems to be the basis yep. of this story didn't fucking happen, guys. Pretty much, yeah. So here's what I think did happen. I think the story is a result of the rift between Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches. What better way to down your... Wait, not all Christians get along? No. Wait, what? That's crazy. So what better way to down your competition than to suggest they turn into goblins because they aren't pious enough? Especially the whole stealing money from the rich for keeping secrets. By the way, a priest who divulges confessions, if found out, are immediately excommunicated. So all the rich folk would have to do is go to the church and tell the parish priest what was going on, and our quote-unquote monk would have been excommunicated. There is another clue in here about how the brothers' prayers were useless because we really need to hammer home how unholy Catholics really are that not even God would help them. So, yeah, terribly told tale should be completely rewritten to at least make sense in the context of Catholic dogma. Beautifully done. Now that we've told the sad tale of how this is literally just a tale, I have to tell you my funny story. I was looking for any sign of a monastery in Easton. Okay. And I came across a Yellow Pages entry for something called St. Rocco's Cat Center. Is it a strip club? I was literally ready to take my cat to this place. It's a strip club. I had a whole idea in my head of what this cat center would be like. I was like, oh my God, JJ is going to flip out. We can go- There's actually like a center that you can take your cat to like have fun. I was confused as to why it was St. Rocco and maybe not St. Gertrude or St. Francis. St. Right. Gertrude being the patron saint of cats. Okay. St. Francis being patron saint of all animals. I'm just excited for when you tell us it's a strip club. Then I realized that cat was an abbreviation for Catholic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's less appealing. All right, so I hate to end on like a complete down. But what do you think? Let's talk about goblins for a little bit. What do you think a goblin is? Like I said, I like the idea of gob being the elemental of the earth. Mm-hmm. Or like a king a king of the element earth. Yeah. Um, and also being king of the gnomes and that. Which, by the way, gnomes actually notoriously don't like goblins and vice versa. Uh, because usually goblins eat gnomes. That's uh, D&D well, that sucks logic. for gnomes. I mean, being a gnome sucks for a gnome. Have you ever, like, some of them have to have 26 books to s- freaking write out their names. All right, continue. What uh, do you think the goblin is? It could still be part of fairy folk, but I think you, before we started, were just talking about the possibility that even fairy folk could be something else. I think that's kind of an interesting take, which is... So, my theory is goblins... We've watched season one and two of Hellier, and they kind of go over... Oh, God. Talk about that again. I, I, yeah, we're going to mention it a little bit, because it's got me thinking. I mean, we're doing this episode because goblins, and they were looking for goblins in the show. So we did plan this way before we knew Hellier was a thing. I was going to say, it's on the board behind us. It's yep. coming down now, because we already did it. So we have our, like... Idea board? Yes. It's our idea board. This was already planned out, so I will say that. Yes. And it just fit in perfectly with doing Hellier reviews first, then doing our goblin thing. Yeah. So one of the themes of, of Hellier is that, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, and oh my gosh, is it this, or is it that, or is it this, or is it that? Well, what if that is just different words for this? So when people are like, oh, I saw a fairy back in the 1500s. People would be like, well, you know, I saw a fairy, blah, blah, blah. I had missed time. A lot of symptoms of what we now call a UFO abduction. Are they the same creatures performing the same tests or doing the same effect on us? We're just renaming it as our technology and understanding evolves. Um, They're no longer fey folk. Like we now recognize that they're not from 
planet Earth. Although even in fairy lore, they're not from planet Earth. They're from, you probably know more about fae lore, but they're from another world. We're going to get more into that in our spring episode for fairy and fae, which might actually become one of our first two-parters. Because, yeah, we can talk about, about the idea that people disappear, like the, the guy who wrote the book that I'm reading. Mm-hmm. He supposedly just disappeared off the face of the earth and was, quote unquote, taken away into very world. So what is that world? Does it exist as a, it's almost like an interdimensional type concept, mm-hmm. which we would talk about how our ghosts here on this plane, or is it a glitch where it's just sort of the dimensions cross over and mm-hmm. we're getting to see different time splits almost like with the residual haunting. It's an interesting way to look at it, but yeah, yeah. Everything... It could all be the same thing. It Yeah, it, it could all... Fairies and UFO could essentially be the same or very similar things just being told with the words of the time. They were using words like goblins for... Which seem, if you go by the description of goblins, they do look like the gray aliens that we're now familiar with. They're very similar. Not exact, but very similar to where it's like, maybe we should look into that. When I was talking about summoning Gob, there's two accounts that I might actually talk about this more too when we do the fairy folk. But there's two accounts that I read where he appeared to these people very similarly looking. Mm -hmm. And ironically, or maybe because of our own vision of what we think a goblin should be like, or a goblin king, or a gnome king, he looks like a D&D type character to them. Like, he's presented himself to them as, you know, looking like a small, maybe three foot tall humanoid wearing a cloak, and one person said that he had, like, a sack on his head that he was wearing sort of as a hat tied on, and then he had, like, a little knife and stuff, but, and then he was, appeared to them and being, like, super nice, though, and even... The one person asked questions of him about learning the path, right? Like learning more about magic. And as I started doing a little bit of that side research for this episode, I started going down into a rabbit hole that led to the Golden Dawn, which I'm sure you know what that is. (laughs) And I don't, I don't even want. I actually do know. I know you do. I don't even want to get into that right now. It was just one of those like wow, okay, um, I'm just going to stop here before I go any further. Mm. We may talk about the Golden Dawn at some point and uh, and magic, but not today. So he appears to be not looking like an alien. Yeah. To them. Anyway. To them. Right. But really, I mean, still you have a short creature that's not dressed correctly. And it's They have a sack on their head. Like, what? Well, why? Now I get goblins are goblins and they're a little mischievous. And not all goblins are evil. I'd like to state that even for D&D. Not all goblins are evil. Sometimes you can have helpful goblins. But, you know, usually they're getting something out of it. So uh, are you like, are we going to start like um, a special society for the uh, betterment of goblin understanding? No, because I also believe that all goblins should be purged with fire. Purge it with fire. So then I have to take the website down then that I was going to start about the the betterment of No, you can leave that up. Let the goblins and goblin supporters all come to one place. See what happens. (laughs) Let me get their email addresses. It'll make them easier to hunt. That sounds just so super sinister, man. God. (laughs) Once again, I have never committed any crimes. My lawyer reminds me to remind everyone that I have never committed any crimes. Uh, I do not use violence as a means of uh, communication. In closing on this particular story, it is apparently not an ongoing phenomenon. It's an interesting legend, and I did want to talk about it because... It seemed to, like, stop. I couldn't find anybody that said anything past the goblin running off into the forest having ever seen anything that resembled that in Easton. But that's not to say that people haven't seen goblin-like creatures. Oh, and this is where I tell my stories. Because, yeah, and I'm like, I'm pointing at him because I'm like, you have a story. So, essentially, I used to do 
ghost hunting in a graveyard. So this graveyard had trees in it. Every now and then we would be taking photos, blah, blah, blah. We wouldn't really see anything at when we're taking the photo or if, but every now and then we would see something that appeared to be a goblinoid figure peeking out behind one of the trees. And it was one of like four trees. Now, I know you're like, oh, well, well, can we see these photos? No, you cannot. I do not have access to them. The device that they were on was destroyed via means of the ground. Yes, <laughs> it was slammed into the ground to the best of my knowledge. Uh, it was an unfortunate situation, but it is what it is. And it was before, you know, clouds existed and, you know, things were all over the place. So it was, they were there and now they don't exist. So take my word on it, hopefully. I mean, I'm not, you know. But it looked like, seemed like a goblinoid-esque creature was peeking out behind these trees looking at us. The one that I really liked is you kind of saw a hand and a head. Like the whole head was poked out. So it was really interesting. Um, that graveyard had a lot of crazy stuff in it. Um, one of these days I will be telling my stories about that graveyard on this here podcast, but no, Oh yeah. It. We're definitely going to be doing a haunted cemetery episode for just like right in this immediate area. Cause there's a lot of like cool cemeteries. Plus coming up, we can plug ourselves again in the very next episode after this, there's some cool cemeteries that pop up too. Not that they're haunted, but definitely places that you would probably want to check out if you're interested in ghost hunting in Bucks County, like just for the heck of it. Because, and also they're absolutely beautiful. Like it's a very beautiful cemetery to visit, which I, I find peace in visiting cemeteries myself. I always take photographs. Um, when I went to Sleepy Hollow uh, Cemetery, that was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been at. It's huge and amazing and did their ghost tour on halloween night a few years ago a lot of fun okay so so goblins i think types of goblins exist exist. i don't think this story the goblin of east is legit first off it's that goblin it would be some type of undead creature right it was probably a curse that was temporary it would have been what over 100 years ago there's no way you're gonna go find this creature out there today and also the monk couldn't have possibly existed because there was no monastery even if it wasn't like a monk. Let's just say it was a townsperson that was a shitty person, beat an old lady to death. Let's just take that. Somebody beat an old lady to death, and in front of everyone, when this person was being hung for his crimes, he turned into a malformed creature. That's still a pretty spooky tale. One of my ideas going forward is to take some of these tales, rewrite them, our book, our Mission Spooky book, yeah, it's going to happen one day. I'm just going to fix it. I'm just going to fix the story. And um, it'll go under legends because... So what, what you're proven. saying is we're going to retell history? Yeah. We're, we're revisionists? Can... Well, there's no history here. There's literally not... Like, how many episodes have we done where I can do the actual historical research and prove without a doubt that this, that, or whatever happened at the location... I don't this know how many episodes we've recorded. <laughs> this is not provable in any way, shape, or form, historically speaking. So it becomes a legend or a tale. And I think it just needs to get retold correctly so that it makes sense. Okay. I don't disagree. We're going to break for our musical guests. And this is a first for us. It's so awesome. It's a song that is not released yet. And it's by Bad Custer out of Pittsburgh, PA. And it will be on their album, Needs Work, that's going to come out in April. Their other albums can be found on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, and Spotify right now. With my personal favorite song being Bones Like Lightning, which that's the song I'm going to add to um, our Mission Spooky playlist um, until this song comes out. But today, we're going to be featuring tiny man Ooh, what a good name for right what we're talking about Ooh, you do so good with these <laughs> it's like it's your fucking job uh yes yeah, it's, it's like i almost um had some experience doing this before hell yeah all right when we get back we're gonna do our shout outs and our spooky squad news but until then tiny man by bad custer thanks so much for listening today spooksters if you want to join the squad head on over to patreon.com slash mission spooky we have tiers at the one and two dollar levels 
one single book gets you a lot of gratitude. And a shout Did out you on say the cast. One single book. One single buck. Uh, like a buck, but not a deer, like an actual dollar. A dollar bill. Book. Pre-record that. Ugh. And the two dollar level <laughs> gets you access to our boober reels. I will be working on some t-shirt designs. Nice. And JC is working on a sticker design. I am? Yes. And ultimately, I would love to have two different sticker packets. So one will be like for our $1 Patreon, so they get a sticker right away. And then maybe a different set for the $3 level that we haven't. We're kind of working on that one right now. Um, So then you guys get a little something extra for your buck, but you also get two stickers at your $3 level. The shout out and the booper reels and maybe something else. I'm not sure yet. Wait, I'm working on a sticker design? (laughs) You know I'm not creative, right? I'm going to have to outsource this. But your girlfriend is super creative. She doesn't do anything for free. I've already tried. That's terrible. (laughs) This is the last week for the restaurant Ghost Stories for the King George Inn. But if you have any story you want to share, feel free. We're going to be doing some themed episodes in the very near future where we interview folks and add stories from our listeners, too. So send your stories to missionspookypodcast at gmail.com. Feel free to also email us any questions or comments on any of the previous episodes. Again, if you're a PA, New Jersey, or Delaware band, and you want us to play your music, and you own your own music, please feel free to contact us private message on instagram or twitter you're going to get me and you can email us directly at that mission spooky podcast at gmail.com we're also on facebook and i roll it with an iron fist i haven't gotten to that yet (laughs) i got too excited it was premature facebook asian sure yeah that sounds fine (laughs) you can find our musical guests on spotify by typing in mission spooky 2020 in the search bar uh, like I said, we're continually adding to that list, and I will put Bones Like Lightning up there for Bad Custer in lieu of Tiny Man, which will be released in April, and then that'll go up as well. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Mission Spooky, and um, since we already did Facebook, <laughs> don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. Just remember to be kind. Also, rate and review us on Pod Chaser. Yeah, I did all of that, and we uh, need to do our shoutouts. So who are you going to do this week? It's a new animated thing on Netflix. It's called Kipo, K-I-P-O. It's animated. It's uh, cute and cool. It's a uh, me and my female companion really enjoy it. What's your shout out? Nobody cares. Oh, they're going to care. My shout out is for Movie Talk with Dan Jensen. Uh, this guy is absolutely hysterical. He also has a little sidekick named Bongo. And Bongo does his own reviews and... They're both funny. You might like one over the other. It's like kind of when what happens when your alter ego gets more likes on Twitter or Instagram than like you actually do. And then you're all like, what the hell, people? Like, I'm funny, too. I say watch both. Oh, and they're on YouTube. So it's Movie Talk with Dan Jensen. And Jensen is J-E-N-S-E-N. Movie Talk. Yay. Go, go do it after this. Go now. Taking us out once again is Bad Custer with Tiny Man. And remember, stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. Via goblin language. Uh, you need a language slot for that. Uh, make sure you save it so you could, you could get in contact with us. Thank you.